Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Butobi here, and did you know there's a way to make your Pokemon even stronger? You may have heard about this in the latest Pokemon International Police Report, or you may have heard about it if you're hanging out at the back of the game corner in Saladon. And no, I'm not talking about rare candies, though they do taste delicious, nor am I talking about Pokemon Evolution. I'm talking, of course, about turning your Pokemon into a Shadow Pokemon. Shh, okay, I, I probably already told you too much. Look, just hang tight and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, Pokemon Masters, if you're still here, then I guess you really want to learn. And heck, maybe you already know something about Shadow Pokemon. Perhaps you've seen past videos of mine on the subject, or you've played through either Ori Adventure. Pokemon Coliseum and Gale of Darkness has you confronting these terrifying Pokemon head on. In both of these Nintendo GameCube games, you don't catch wild Pokemon. Instead, you'll play as a character catching other people's Pokemon using what's called a Snag Machine. This is done in the name of Justice, reclaiming Shadow Pokemon from the evil Team Snagum and Team Cypher. Shadow Pokemon are Pokemon with the doors to their hearts locked off. Instead of having access to their usual moves, they fight more aggressively using shadow moves, and sometimes they even attack their own trainers. Now, of course, in the games, your goal is to snag all of the shadow Pokemon, to claim them for yourself, to treat them with love, kindness, and care, to send them out into healthy Pokemon battles, to call their names if needed, to eventually get to a point where you can purify them and turn them back into regular old Pokemon. In Pokemon Gale of Darkness, we actually learn that there is a purification machine, a bit of technology that you can stuff your Pokemon inside to make it happy. It looks comfier than this. In that machine, alongside regular Pokemon, your shadow Pokemon will enter a state of flow, a state of calm that will allow it to revert back to a regular Pokemon. This means that changing in and out of this state is biological, it's physiological, it's tied to the very being of the Pokemon. It's not just a Pokemon having a grump and throwing a tantrum. If that was the case, then Ash's Pikachu at the beginning of I Choose You, that would definitely be a shadow Pokemon, but it's not, he's just grumpy. And to be fair, if I had to travel with Ash, I probably would be too. It is interesting to note, however, that in that I Choose You movie, all of the wild Pokemon get corrupted when a trainer with an impure heart touches the Rainbow Wing. They then come under the control of Mars Shadow, and they get this purpley aura and aggression towards trainers. But for Shadow Pokemon, it can be more than just purple eyes and a little bit of an aggression. As we see in XD Gale of Darkness, XD001 is the code name for the box art Pokemon, Shadow Lugia, an entirely new form of Lugia altogether created by the admin, Lovrina. She, through her twisted methods, has found a way to create the ultimate shadow Pokemon, a Pokemon that supposedly cannot be reverted back. And these pure shadow Pokemon we've actually seen a few times in the franchise. In Pokemon Tournament, we see the shadow Mewtwo corrupted in its nature by a Synergy Stone. And in the Pokemon movie Forever, we see the Iron Mask Marauder, a high-ranking member of Team Rocket, capture a Celebi and turn it into a new dark form of itself. This is actually reflected in the card game in the Dark Celebi card. And this transformation is happening as the result of a dark ball. This is a special kind of Pokeball that seems to be changing the essence of the Pokemon, capturing them as we see with this weak and sad Tyranitar and ultimately changing them. Turning the Tyranitar into a monstrous version of itself that Brock identifies as having something funny about it. So it seems that turning a Pokemon from a regular Pokemon and a shadow Pokemon can also be done with the power of technology, a technology owned by a Team Rocket member. And when we consider that Team Rocket might be behind this, it's not totally weird. I've done videos about this before. When we look to the hierarchical structure of Team Snagum, we see that they are a group of low-level thieves and grunts that ultimately are really being controlled by Team Cypher, who are scientists, and that's the same as Team Rocket, who have their grunts and then their scientists. And with both teams, their enigmatic leaders are high-ranking members of society, with Giovanni being a gym leader and Cypher's leader being a mayor. And of course, those of you who have taken on Team Go Rocket will know, because Professor Willow says so, that Team Go Rocket seem to be behind the Shadow Pokemon phenomenon. We learn that Team Go Rocket must be behind the Shadow Pokemon phenomenon, exaggerating their strength, overpowering them, causing them a great deal of pain with their uncontrollable newfound power. All of these Pokemon getting a shadowy aura, apart from, interestingly enough, Mewtwo. But this MO isn't unlike Team Rocket. We saw them try the exact same thing at the Lake of Rage, where they tried to overpower 
Magikarp and force them to evolve using radio tower waves. Honestly, this is just what Team Rocket does. And this connection is even backed up by Lovrina, the very admin that turned Lugia into Shadow Lugia. Her main Pokemon are Love Disk and a Shadow Delcatty, and in the Pokemon animated series, we meet Dr. Namba, a high-ranking scientist within Team Rocket who, in the World Island arc, is trying to steal a Lugia and its baby. Why does he want this Lugia? Perhaps to turn it into a Shadow Pokemon. And interestingly enough, he also appears in the Pokemon Chronicle series over the control of Butch and Cassidy, and with those at his disposal, he sends them off to catch a Love Disk and a Delcatty. But that might just be a coincidence. I mean, he's not a very big character, and he only appears one more time after that, so, I mean, yeah, sure, complete coincidence. Coincidence. Despite the fact that in those very World Island episodes, he's also trying out his Rage Crown technology, a technology that causes the Pokemon to become more powerful and more aggressive. As I alluded to earlier, further connections to Shadow Pokemon can of course be seen in the Pokemon card game, in three different sets primarily. In the sets Team Rocket, EX Team Rocket Returns, and Neo Destiny, and no guesses as to what the theming of two of three of those sets are. These dark Pokemon in the card game seem to be an exact equivalent to Shadow Pokemon. I even mentioned the Dark Celebi, which is from another set, which ultimately is a reflection of the Celebi from the fourth movie. But let's take a quick look at that other set, Neo Destiny, whose blurb reads, To light and to darkness. Pokemon bathed in mysterious light and Pokemon shrouded in darkness. What is their connection to Team Rocket? The mystery deepens and the adventure never ends. And actually what we learn when we look at these new light Pokemon that counteract the dark Pokemon is that they have higher HP than their regular Pokemon forms and they tend to have attacks that aid other Pokemon in battle. They're all about companionship and training together. And of course, on point to their characters, they're all very, very happy in their artworks. Just look at that dugong. But this to me then begs the question, if we've got shadow and dark Pokemon and then a sort of pure shadow Pokemon that can't be changed like the Lugia and the Celebi and the, and the Mewtwo, do we have a version of this for light Pokemon, Pokemon with a strong bond with their trainer that kind of excel and become more powerful. You might immediately go, ah, Toby, what about Mega Evolution? But Mega Evolution really isn't this. At first, it seems so. I mean, Mega Pokemon, they only are able to Mega Evolve when there's a strong bond with the trainer that they're with, but ultimately their Pokedex entries describe some horrifying things. Salamance's Pokedex entry tells us that the stress of its two proud wings becoming misshapen and stuck together because of a strong energy makes it go on a rampage. And according to Aerodactyl's Pokedex entry, when it Mega Evolves, it becomes more vicious than ever. Some say that's because of the excess of power causing it pain. Occasionally, there are advantages to Mega Evolution. Pincer's entry says that bathed in the energy of Mega Evolution, its wings become unusually developed. It flies at speeds of approximately 30 miles an hour. And while practically that's very, very useful for a trainer and in battle, it might not be so good naturally for the Pokemon. It seems these Pokemon have been artificially inflated in power and they sound a lot like Shadow Pokemon themselves. On top of that, in the Magirna and Volcanion movie, we actually see Mega Pokemon take on that same shadowy aura and becoming aggressive towards trainers. Seemingly, these Pokemon can become Shadow Pokemon too. So we've got our normal Pokemon, Shadow Pokemon, and Light Pokemon, and then we've got pure Shadow Pokemon, and maybe Mega Evolution is more of an in-between, a neutral, where there are benefits to it, and it can only happen with a strong bond with a trainer, but ultimately, it does lead to some pain, so it's kind of in the middle. And we're still left wondering, what is the alternative for Light Pokemon? Perhaps Gigantamax? Well, I think... Probably not. When we look to Gigantamax Pokemon, their G-Max forms seem to be projections. It's been mentioned in interviews and I think in-game as well that these Pokemon, they don't really have anything to do with the nature of the Pokemon being good or bad, light or dark. But instead, I want to suggest a Pokemon that has an unbreakable bond with its trainer, so much so that it actually changes its form to look like the trainer it's working with. We've only seen it once in the whole of Pokemon. And I'm talking about Ash Greninja. The Ash Greninja, or Battle Bond Greninja, may well be a reflection to this. A Pokemon so good, so pure, so bonded with the trainer that it seems to exceed evolution becoming this new form. And I don't know, maybe it's the case that Battle Bond Greninja really is the kind of parallel to pure shadow Pokemon, but then again, the transformation is only temporary, so I'm not so sure. Hey Pokemon Masters, Future Toby here. Also, uh, many of you might be thinking about the new Illumina Pokemon from the new Pokemon Snap game, and I actually do think that could be a good candidate for the lightest kind of Pokemon. I mean, they're literally light, but I'll have a full theory about that 
next week. Another example though of a Pokemon going from regular and becoming light might be seen when we take care of our Pokemon, when we love them and look after them. When we feed our Pokemon well in Pokemon Ami, groom them in Pokemon Refresh or play with them in Pokemon Camp, our Pokemon bond with us and they become fundamentally more powerful. They're more frequently able to land critical hits, heal from paralysis and burn and that kind of thing and of course survive damage that would otherwise knock them out. These Pokemon in the game bonding with their trainer, the explanation for this is that they're light Pokemon. So we know that Pokemon can become more powerful through acts of goodness. But of course, Team Rocket believes that Shadow Pokemon exist solely to be used as tools by them. They want to achieve this same power, but instead of putting in the time to love and take care of their Pokemon, they use artificial means to achieve the same level of strength. And where did Team Rocket get this incredible technology? Well, I believe they got it from creating Mewtwo. Mewtwo is the ultimate Pokemon life form, and we know that when it comes to shadow Pokemon, it is different. As I mentioned earlier in Pokemon Go, you can't get a shadow Mewtwo, or at least it doesn't look the same as the other shadow Pokemon in the game. We also know that in Pokemon Tournament, there is a shadow Mewtwo, but it's been corrupted by an outside force, this Synergy Stone. It can Mega Evolve like regular Pokemon, but in fact has two Mega Evolutions, making it only one of two Pokemon that have two Mega Evolutions. And on top of this, despite the fact that it came out all the way back at the beginning in Generation 1, Mewtwo has consistently remained at the top of all Pokemon strength lists since the beginning of the franchise. It's always been known as one of the strongest Pokemon, and in-universe is known as the most powerful Pokemon. This is probably because in part, Mewtwo is created from the DNA of Mew, a Pokemon that contains the ancestral DNA of every single Pokemon and in part the DNA of humans. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, we learn that Mewtwo is created by the infusion of DNA from Blaine's arm. In the Pokemon First movie, we learn that the DNA of Amber, Dr. Fuji's daughter, has been put into Mewtwo. This is in the Japanese version only. But it is there, it does carry over. Mewtwo is part human. It's a video I've done on this channel before. Mewtwo is frankly an abomination. It's a Pokemon that is torn in two, disgusted by its own creation, unsure what to make of its purpose. That twisting, that ripping apart of itself causes it to be enraged, to be angry. It causes offshoots like the Berserk Gene, an item that can be found in Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal outside the Cerulean Cave, the very cave that Mewtwo resides in. This Berserk Gene, if you give it to a Pokemon in battle in the games, it will ultimately boost their attack stat but confuse them. Does that sound familiar? It's because the creation of Mewtwo wasn't just about creating the single most powerful Pokemon, it was about putting forward the genetics, the science, the technology to creating an army of shadow Pokemon under Team Rocket's control. And the clues to this, of course, can be seen in the Detective Pikachu movie. In Detective Pikachu, Rhyme City is played by the terror of the Argas, R for Rocket or R for Rage. We know that Team Rocket exists in this world because Team Rocket are directly referenced for creating Mewtwo in the movie. And it just so happens that the Argas comes from Mewtwo and when applied to a Pokemon, it gives them those purple eyes, that shadowy aura and makes them more aggressive. This is sadly the other purpose for which Mewtwo was created. This is perhaps why the version of Mewtwo in Pokemon might be the most deadly and dangerous Pokemon ever to exist. And why typically it's been so hard for Team Rocket to make Mewtwo become a shadow form, instead trying to enhance its powers with special armors. But on the side of that, Team Rocket has been taking those Berserk genes, making the Argas, infecting other Pokemon with it, turning them into Shadow Pokemon. Much like Light Pokemon, they're just a little bit stronger, but sadly these Pokemon are in pain. Team Rocket have even gone as far as to teaming up with Team Snagum and Cypher, injecting this, this rage, this anger, this shadow power into even the legendary Lugia. Team Rocket have spread this shadow power across the Pokemon world to try and create an army of Pokemon under their control. But there is hope, Pokemon Masters, and that is you. See, a perfect shadow Pokemon, the kind that Team Rocket are trying to create, we've only seen the three of them, the Celebi, the Lugia, and the Mewtwo, and the Celebi only really had dark rings around its eyes. It wasn't like it had gone through a full, full transformation. Now, to those three in the entire history of Pokemon, we've only seen one Battle Bond Greninja, a Pokemon that is so fueled by love and friendship for its trainer that it's able to exceed evolution. And maybe that's where you come in. 
by using Refresh and Ami and Pokemon Camp, you're not just sitting there bonding with Pokemon, you're trying to make them even more powerful. Perhaps these light Pokemon and some new form of Pokemon that exceeds all goodness, perhaps that's the answer to truly combating these evil shadow Pokemon. So I implore you Pokemon Masters, go down the path of light. Go down the path of light, do good things, train well, take on Team Rocket, and of course, so high, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A huge thank you to those of you who have been supporting this channel financially, whether that's through buying my merch, my Tree of Life poster, or those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of this month, JD Gottlich, Michael Hornshoe, and Matty Barr. Thank you.